We're part of the local society called the Atlanta Society of Finance and Investment Professionals. When we look at risk, fraud online is rising at an alarming rate. The chip, the advent of the chip on the, on the credit card has meant that people are going online to create fraud instead of going to the store to create fraud. So what we've seen is the average fraud has gone from $329 to $600. The average numbers have gone from total damage of $125 million in, in 03 to almost $500 million this uh, in 2013. And the, uh, the fraud cases, 63000 versus 290000 so fraud online is becoming very profitable. Therefore, you've got to learn how to protect yourself. So protect your social security. Don't carry it. Never give it on the phone. Think before giving it out. Protect your mail. Collect it at the post office on vacation. Opt out um, and try to shred any items that uh, have personal information on them. Beware of the telephone. Um, the telephone, you know, can you hear me? You take their voice saying yes, and they use that as a uh, way to then use you know, your approval for something online. So get on a do not call list. Don't listen to people who are gonna potentially defraud you. Limit the communication to people that you know, and that will lessen the likelihood of you getting defrauded. I met someone at a CFA event, she said, look, I, I don't need to learn how to invest money, I just gotta to try to avoid, you know, I just got defrauded for $1,000. People's savings are not large enough that that $1,000 is gonna be easy to come by. So you've got to take care of yourself and watch out for anybody who is, is approaching you about money or about any of these issues. Um, protect the trash and protect your wallet. Take a photo of your cards, place this photo. You can also place a note on your signature so that your, it says photo ID required. And in that way, nobody could ever use your credit card without having the photo ID that matches the credit card. It's another way to secure your information and your money you work hard for it, so take care of it. Preventing fraud is mainly on the web. Try to use only trusted online retailers. It's very easy to be defrauded when you're on websites and places that you, can't, you don't recognize. So stay with the, where you know. Don't reuse passwords. Use strong combinations of numbers and letters and characters because I think uh, Falcons 101 has probably already been taken by a few people. You know. I think that we, you have to be something unique and something about you that you want to be safe. Um, secure your local network. Make sure you have some firewalls and some protection in place. Never click on hyperlinks in an email. You don't know what they're going to do, and it could be a Trojan horse that's going to come in and affect your computer. Never click on links in an email. Two things that affected me personally, uh, fake lotteries. My father, when he was 85 years old, kept getting approached by these people, and eventually he was lonely and he succumbed and he started sending them money. Fake lotteries, fake charities are out there. They're preying on military, they're playing on elderly, they're preying on anyone who they think they can make money with. So just be careful and tell the people you know, don't, don't fall for these things. They, they, their an approach is to, to get people to be comfortable with them. They keep calling, they keep talking to you, and eventually you say, okay, I'll send you some money. Um, watch out for these scams because they're, they're, they're hurting our economy and they're hurting you know, people's lives. Summary, is your information, keep it safe. Avoid anything that feels pressured or uncomfortable. Your instincts are usually right. If it doesn't feel right, it probably isn't right. So avoid it. Public networks and data sharing should be avoided. Um, keep backups on your credit cards so that when you're compromised, you can quickly cancel them and eliminate future liability. And then verify transactions online that you're unsure of. You see something hit your statement, could be just a $1 charge, there could be somebody just testing to see whether it works, and they're going to hit you with a larger charge later. Know who you, where you're spending it, and verify online when you've done something. And also, the Bureau of Consumer Protection helps you. Um, next, the, the emergency fund. This is probably the biggest issue we have in the state of Georgia in terms of people and the country. Nobody has any emergency funds. 40% uh, have less than $400 for an emergency fund. 60% have less than 1,000. You saw the fraud cases of $629. Healthcare costs are, on average event, is, a, is over $1,000. If you don't have some protection for those, you're gonna need to spend money on a credit card with a 21% interest rate, get a Title Max loan with a 50, go to you know, payday, there's a lot of people who will give you money on terms that are no good for you. So 
you've got to figure out how to fund your own liabilities, which is future losses because of some event you don't know about. We don't know where the next thing is that's going to affect us, whether it's a car accident, whether it's a health event, or whether it's something that's completely random. But you need to be prepared for it. Be prepared and take care of it and develop an emergency fund. Job loss, medical emergency, home repairs. General rule of thumb is you should have four to seven months of expenses, but just start. The key to all of these items is to start. None of this is, is like you click all these things and you're done. It's all a process, and if you start the process, you get a good chance that you're going to be well prepared if some event occurs. How to get started? Considering it like a utility bill. Set it up as a separate account at the other bank. Have the money automatically go there. $25 a month, $50 a month, whatever you can afford. Set it up. Let it be paid. Don't think about it. Let it build up. And then all of a sudden when something happens, you know you have a cushion there that's built and you don't need to worry about it. Use a separate account. Online banks are great. Out of sight and out of mind is the best thing you can do. Automatically doing it is going to make you very successful. Emergency fund, building the fund. If you get a bonus or for some reason there's a signing bonus or some different uh, large tax refund that you weren't expecting, sell some items on eBay or Craigslist. Build the fund so that you can have the freedom to do the things you want. Your life is going to evolve based on how you manage it. So employers look at people who are stressed and depressed and their job performance isn't as good. The people who exercise, the people who are more content, the people who are thinking about growing their skills, they tend to do better. And guess what? They tend to get more money. And guess what? They tend to get the promotions and their stress and depression levels go down. The people who don't exercise and don't do these things tend to, it's a vicious circle. You want to get on a virtuous circle, not a vicious circle, and the emergency fund is part of that. Borrowing incurs interest. Um, payday loans, Title Max, 401k loans in Georgia are 50% more prevalent than the rest of the country. The rest of the country has about 10%. Georgia has 15% in 401k loans and 16% in payday loans. So why are more people here doing this? We need to get, make it aware to people that that interest rate that you're being charged and the conditions are bad for you. Therefore, don't, don't put yourself in a position where you're going to have to turn to them as, an alter, as your uh, answer. Credit cards are not the answer. A 21% rate is not a fair rate. Therefore, you've got to try to make sure you have the uh, emergency fund in place. If you have a credit card, make sure it's the lowest rate you can get and try to work on your credit, which is the next section we're going to talk about. Credit and debt, use money wisely. Credit and debt should be used, but they should be used wisely. You shouldn't think about, I have a credit card for $1,000, I can spend $1,000. That $1,000 is the maximum, but your credit results will be better if you keep it below 30%. You can use, your score is, is just like a grade in Kasim Ali's class or Professor Hudson's class. You gotta manage it. Your credit score is going to be based on different factors, and you've got to take control and try to make them work for you. Um, if you're not staying on top of your money, you're putting your financial being and well-being at risk. This Coping with Debt is a great website. If you go to check it out, I think you'll find it's useful, especially with student loan debt. Here's your credit score, 0 to 850. There's three agencies that do it. Um, all of the agencies have basically the same formula. And that formula is like anything else. It's something you have to be managed. The biggest part of this is payment history. Payment history is uh, over 30% of the weight. Payment history means being laid on, your, uh, laid on your bills. Amount of debt is how much of your credit card debt you're utilizing and how much of your income you're utilizing. And then the others um, are smaller, length of history, a new credit card, and type of mix. Automate your payments. Make your life simple. You got a $60 utility bill, don't say, hey, I'm going to wait until the last day to automate it to be paid on the day it's due, not a day before. And then you don't have to worry about anything in terms of getting done and affecting your credit history. Better scores leads to better rates on cars and insurance and homes. You will save about $110,000 over the course of your life if you have a better than average credit score. $110,000 that's going to go to you and your retirement and your future well-being. You manage it well, 
your results are well. So understand it's your responsibility. This is the most critical section. On time is, is a one, a nine is in collections. There's all sorts of places in between one and nine. Keep with the one, pay your bills on time, and don't let things, you know, you have, if you have the money and you don't pay the bills, it's just hurting yourself. And when you go to a new job, they'll look for your credit score. When you go to get a car, they'll look at your credit score. When you go to get a home loan, they look at your credit score. Who's going to be there to explain why? Nobody cares about the explanation. Take care of your bills. Pay them on time. Save, save whenever you can on your time and effort by automating. Uh, it takes time to get a late payment or a missed payment off of your record. It takes about a year to a year and a half. So don't get the missed payment, and then you won't have to worry about getting it off your record. Pay your higher rate cards first. This is also a very good website, Take Charge America. They want to help restructure debt for people. Amount of debt, the rule here is 30%. If you get a $1,000 card or a $2,000 card, you know, keep it below 30%. If your credit card has to carry a balance, which I wouldn't recommend, pay it off at the end of the month. But if you have to carry a balance, make sure it's below 30%. That will make your score maximized in the credit bureau's eyes. Um, only way to build history is to take your time. Do it well. So use your credit wisely, and you'll build a history that will be strong. And then your, your scores and your uh, results will be much better. New credit, I, I recommend people pay off their credit. Um, it helps build the new credit. I think that the credit mix is between revolving and installment. Installment is like uh, for a car or for a home. Um, revolving debt is when you put on 1000 or you put on 500 and then you take it off the next month. Uh, you like to have more of installment debt. Installment debt shows you can commit to something for a long period of time, whether it's a five-year car loan or wherever. If you're going to have debt, it's much better to have installment than to have revolving. Debt to income ratio, it's a key component of your mortgages, especially when you apply for a mortgage. Housing is about 28% max. Car loans, about 10% max. So revolving debt, about 5%. So think about your debt and look at where you are and say, gee, that car loan is too high as a percent of what I make. Georgia has one of the worst ratios in states in the union. The average person who owns a $40,000 car in Georgia has a $58,000 income. The average person in Ohio who has a $40,000 car has $110,000 income. The average New Yorker, $120,000. The average person in Massachusetts, close to $130,000. Why do people have $40,000 cars and make only $58,000? I don't know, but it's not a good financial decision. <laughs> I, I, I have an idea. So summary. Manage the risk and prevent fraud. Cut, up, cut your debt and utilize it carefully. It's, it's, your, it's your future. Take it in your hands and, and try to make the most of it. Um, keep your margin of safety as you have your emergency fund. If it occurs, you can absorb it. You're prepared. It's just like getting ready for a game. It's just like getting ready for a presentation. You're prepared if something happens. Automate your payments below $150. Simplify your life, and the strat your, you'll strengthen your scores and your financial future. Now, um, Dean is going to talk about what to do with your money once you've, uh, once you've saved it. Thank you.